the hierarchy of nature, um, as I describe in Evolution to the Theory in Crisis, arises when you try to classify organisms into different groups. And you find that, in fact, different groups have what are called taxa-defining novelties. Uh, mammals have a diaphragm. They have an enucleate red cell. Uh, they have six layers in the cerebral cortex. Um, uh, and they have other defining characteristics. And so animals that have these defining characteristics you call mammals. And then you have another group called tetrapods, which includes mammals, birds, and um, all terrestrial vertebrates. And the defining characteristic of the tetrapods is what is called the pentadactyl limb. That's the um, one bone, two bones, five fingers pattern, which is present in the uh, fore and hind limbs of all terrestrial vertebrates. So nature is ordered um, into different groups, increasingly, as it were, inclusive groups. You have mammals, and then mammals are included within the tetrapods, and then, of course, tetrapods uh, and fish are, in, are included in the vertebrata. So you have um, nature seems to be organized into a, into a hierarchy of um, ever more inclusive classes. And each class is defined by a distinct novelty or homologue, depending on whether you're an evo devoist or a classical systemist, um, by a defining characteristic or characteristics. And so nature, from classification, you get a hierarchy of order. What's extraordinary about it is that nearly all these defining characteristics uh, provide not the slightest evidence of how they came about in terms of any Darwinian model. Uh, nearly all of them are discrete, and that's why you can have discrete classes in nature. And that's why you have a form of classification called cladistics, because the modern, modern cladists looks for these defining characteristics and defines classes in, in whether, whether that particular characteristic uh, is, you know, is, is possessed by all the members of the class. And so it's the fact that these novelties are homologues which define the taxa are on the whole distinct, uh, unique entities which are not led up to by a whole, whole series of sort of, you know, adaptive little, once again, we're back to the incremental adaptive steps. So that it's the distinctness and uniqueness of the novelties which define the taxa, which is such a challenge. You wouldn't expect on a Darwinian model to get so many uh, unique homologues or novelties which are not led up to anywhere. Not only are they not led up to in nature, and that's how you have distinct classes, but you can't in many cases conceive of how, theoretically, they came about.